You're looking at a weekly chart of uh, Cisco Systems back from 1990, uh, 91, actually. It, it IPO'd in 90. And I'm doing this IPO uh, version. Yeah, February of 1990, Cisco IPO'd. And this, this is considered, um, I'm going to go through a couple of the styles of IPOs. Then I'm going to get into recent IPOs that I think, you know, if you're looking for the next Cisco or Amazon uh, or, you know, just a, a home run stock, most of the super growth uh, happens in the first you know, eight or 10 years of an IPO. So I'm going to go through about 10 or 12 of those, but I'm going to look at some of the styles of IPO, starting with Cisco Systems, which was considered a late bloomer. You know, it came to market and didn't do much for a long, long time, you know, almost a year here. What? February to eight months. And then it all started with a cup-shaped pattern. So take note of that. And then the breakout, and then it went higher. And if I could fast forward, you know, you could see that uh, Cisco was just a beast. I can go to the monthly here. And uh, <laughs> Cisco was quite the uh, the winning stock until I uh, go to 2000. It was a 10-year run for Cisco, uh, 1990 to uh, 2000. And then, um, you know, what happened after that? It just uh, peaked. And then as the dot-com crash happened, Cisco fell and has never recovered and never came back. But that is a, a late bloomer uh, stock. Another one around this time period, a uh, different style is eBay. This is one that actually traded back in the day. eBay was, uh, you know, you could, this is called the... Um, you know, the rocket ship, <laughs> the rocket ship emoji. You can see when it IPO'd, it didn't take long. This thing took right off eBay. Everybody was, you know, swapping goods on their uh, site. And it was very popular. Great stock. I mean, it went, uh, you know, in uh, October of 98 from $4 and it ran to what, 117 by uh, April of 99. So that is the rocket ship style of uh, stock. Um, one of the terms called uh, pump and dump <laughs> is another style and uh, Facebook was a pump and dump but what do you mean by the pump and dump well it came to the market with great fanfare very well publicized but what happened like one day or one week it had a uh, you know started at 45 and it wasn't too much longer later it was uh, you know down at 18 bucks there so that's the old um, pump and dump that's Facebook I got two more to show you one is Google which was the stair stepper type of IPO. And I'm going to go back to 2009 and uh, go to the weekly there. There you can see the stair step, how it, you know, Google also came to mark with a lot of fanfare. Everybody knew about Google. It was already a, you know, a verb. We're going to Google something. But anyway, I Googled it. You could uh, see the cup, another cup, you know, the stair step, advance, you know, another cup, you know, advance, another cup advanced so that's what they call them the stair stepper type of uh stock you can see that the stairs how it just stepped its way up to higher prices eventually right <laughs> okay um so i did a rocket ship i did the uh, pump and dump which was meta i did the stair stepper which was google i did the late bloomer which was cisco and i've got to show the uh one hit wonder oh my god these hurt the Lending Club, and I got to go to the Lending Club in what, about uh, 2019 with a PIPO? Uh, no, before that, Marty, how about 2018? Anyway, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that's why it's called the uh, One Hit Wonder. One hit, and then boom, sells right off, never to be heard from again. Um, anyway, I'm more interested. I um, went through, uh, you know, over 900 IPOs from 2019 till present and uh i just got to show you the 10 or 12 that i like um and you know there's like i said there's you know more than 900 of them i left out some good ones like uh, coinbase and dutch bros you know airbnb uh beam uh academy sports uh on holdings uh, you know i left out quite a few of the retail and i like retail but um i just you know, kind of tried to pick the best ones. And so I'm going to start with CrowdStrike. And CrowdStrike, if you go back to their um, IPO, if I go to the monthly, you can see all of these IPOs are going to have pretty much the same um, charts because 
in 2020, we know what happened. 2021, a lot of stimulus, government spending, throwing money at the market during COVID, a lot of money sloshing around. So they all went up. And then when the Fed started uh, raising interest rates and started their quantitative tightening program, they all went down. So they all look the same. So really, the only thing to be concerned about is recently, right? How are they performing recently? And that's what I'm concerned with. And you can see that, you know, we know the NASDAQ sold off from, I'm going to go to the daily chart here. That's a weekly. The NASDAQ sold off from mid-July, about right here. July 19th was the high. There it is, your high, to October um, 26th. So uh, CrowdStrike was 161 was the high on the 19th. And by the time, you know, uh, October 26th came around, uh, it was... Um, 178. So it appreciated while the NASDAQ sold off. So I'm thinking that this is in its institutional, it's gone through its due diligence phase and now it's in the advanced stage. And this is the most powerful stage of an IPO. Um, this is just my my best guess. Um, and I, I think that the high here in CrowdStrike can definitely be taken out. And what I look for in charts is not just the um, you know, the institutional due diligence phase and the, and the advanced phase, I also look for earnings because it's not going to go up just because of the chart. These companies have to deliver sales and earnings growth and CrowdStrike certainly has. Um, yeah, it's an expensive company. It's got a market cap of, you know, 49 billion. Uh, but if they continue to grow, and I think cybersecurity is one spot where companies are going to continue to pile money in because you can't afford, you can't afford to be hacked. And uh, CrowdStrike has great products. I think this is pretty clear to me that this is going to be one of the stronger stocks here as we enter 2024. And during this, uh, you know, the last few weeks of the year, uh, looks to be, you know, really strong uh, stock. So that's definitely number one on my list. I'm just going to go through these kind of randomly. And this is Zscaler, same, um, same theme, same type of deal. Not quite as strong there during the pullback recently, but I believe it's... Um, you know, it's got the same profile, right? Right up when the money's, you know, sloshing around, then down when the interest rates. And now now it's starting to normalize and starting to show some strength. Um, it's got to get through that um, little resistance there, which is at the 30-week line at, uh, what, 188.76. So it's right there. But anyway, um, Zscaler is another one that I like. It's showing a lot of strength. And like I said, it's in that area where, Companies are going to spend, you know, uh, computer software security. It's got, you know, 40% in the sales uh, area and triple digit earnings growth. So this is definitely another one to watch. Um, I don't know if it's going to be the next Cisco or Amazon, but it could be a, you know, home run stock for sure. Uber is another one. I know that the you know, younger generation, they don't even have cars. They just get around town with Uber and they get a thousand dollar Uber bill. And when you think about it, you don't have a car payment, you don't have insurance, registration, you don't pay gas. So you save a lot of money. Yeah, you have a big Uber bill, but it you know, probably comes out in the wash. But anyway, I'm gonna go back to the monthly and start with this. Um, once again, you know, when it IPO'd, you know, it had a nice run in uh, it IPO'd a little before the other ones. This is uh, May of 19, sold off like a lot of IPOs do, and then had this nice run in 2020, and then uh, in 2021, like every other stock, and then sold off like most stocks, uh, especially of this ilk. But it seems like it's had its due diligence phase in here, and now it's starting its advance phase. One thing is, though, that while the index sold off, this thing sold off as well. It was down 4%. In August, 2% in uh, September and nearly 6% in October. And now it's had a heck of a nice month here, 25% after earnings, um, a nice earnings report. But Uber is definitely one to watch. You know, taking out this high there of uh, what 64 is, is likely. Uh, definitely one of these IPOs that I'm, I'm watching and interested in. Another one is DraftKings. Now, this is a SPAC. I'm... People are going to gamble, right? I mean, that's human nature. <laughs> uh, they're going to spend more and more on gambling. And uh, these this, this company seems to be taking um, quite a bit of market share. Once again, the same profile. 
you know, up during the heyday, down during the interest rate hikes, and now it's gone through this institutional due diligence phase, and it's in its advanced phase. Same with Uber. It was down those three months that the NASDAQ was, but it certainly has uh, gained steam this month up uh, almost 39% in November for DraftKings. Definitely one to watch. Datadog is another one software. And I got, I'm got i going through a few software names here, and I got to be honest, I don't know what all these software names do, but I don't think it matters. Uh, you got to look at the earnings and sales growth. This is a monthly profile for Datadog. Once again, up with the money sloshing around down when the interest rates uh, and the quantitative tightening and now it's gone through this institutional due diligence phase and could be in its starting its advanced stage here this is up uh, 34 percent this month you know after going down 10 percent last month five percent in september 17 percent in august so definitely some seasonality hit these stocks but uh, Datadog's, um, I believe, my fourth one that I showed you or my fifth one. Yeah, my fifth one. Okay, Duolingo. And I'm just showing you monthly charts here. I really should go to weekly but and daily because these are set up. Now, if you look at the monthly chart, this looks like a nice this looks like a nice chart to buy right here, right? I mean, if you're looking at the monthly. Uh, but anyway, this one uh, IPO in July of 21. So it was a little bit after covid uh, and just right on time for the uh, interest rate hike and the big sell off. And you could have this one not long ago for what ninety bucks was it down to sixty eight this month? Yeah, it started the it started the year at sixty eight. So yeah, and if you look at the weekly, this thing just looks to me, you know, the old high was two oh five there. It looks to me just like a big old base, big old base. Pull back there, and then the breakout. So now I've had the breakout, and okay, this is not a short stroke pattern, but um, that looks pretty good to me because it had the big move and then didn't give up anything. So uh, Duolingo, though, could be coming out of its um, institutional due diligence phase and into the advanced phase. So another one that I like. Uh, Cloudflare, this is in that uh, you know software. I believe they're um, you know more of a security as well. But this one IPO, and this one was a rocket ship like eBay. This one just went flying in 2020, 2021. You can see the uh, top there, very climatic top. I'm sure if you looked at the daily, it probably broke its uh, uh, upper trend line, but it was at 222, 221. Yeah, just sold right off with the rest of the market, went through this institutional due diligence phase, was down those three months that the market corrected, but you know it's up uh, 26% this month. And um, could be starting its advance phase. If I go to the daily, uh, hang with me here, folks. 2021, yeah, it looks pretty climactic how it just, uh, you know, it, it advances, you know, at a certain pace, you know, a trajectory. The trajectory changes like that. That's the climax top right there. And eventually it, uh, you know, sold off there. Yeah, November of uh, 21, like, you know, the rest of the market. And there it goes. Crash, bang, we'll see you later. All right, uh, Palantir is another one. It's a stock that uh, um, I know a lot of people really like Palantir. Um, I'm not really fond of the company, but you know I'm open-minded to uh, and nimble to trade this one. This one looks pretty good to me. It's on our ready list here. Nice cup shape pattern. I, I showed you these, uh, the ones from before, and they all broke out with uh, cups uh, seemingly. But if you look at the weekly, chart on uh, Palantir, you can see how it uh, started off as a rocket ship and then went through its institutional due diligence phase down here. Now it seems like it's coming out of it. And this is a stage two base here. And um, yeah, I, I, I like Palantir. I mean, I like the stock. I don't really like their company, but um, I'm not going to let that get in the way of, uh, you know, buying, a, you know, stock that can make me money. Anyway, up 38% this month. So Palantir's having a good month after earnings. Uh, Dash is another one, DoorDash. I don't use DoorDash, but a lot of people do, I suppose. Um, it came to market at the wrong time, really. Uh, this is an IPO that uh, came out at the end of, uh, what? what is that, 20? Yeah, 2020. Had a little run in 2021, and then the market topped. And it sold off like everything else. And it went through its institutional due diligence phase and could be coming out of this, uh, you know, and starting its advanced stage. And you got to be open-minded 
That is a possibility. DoorDash. Um, I've got to go to the um, the numbers here because this is what this is what I look for. It's got, you know, 30, 40 percent sales growth. I'm not going to have earnings yet, but you want the sales. Sales will come before earnings. Next year is supposed to earn 261. We'll see about that, but uh, definitely one to watch. Monday, this is a British stock. I got to admit, I know nothing about it. Or what does it say? Headquartered in Israel. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, went up in 2021 and then sold off. You know, they came to market, what, uh, yeah, in the middle of 2021, right before the crash. And there you can see it's looks like it's still in its uh, due diligence phase, but it could be coming out of it, you know, as it's up uh, 30% this month. Uh, they had earnings uh, as well. They were pretty strong. So um, Monday is another one. I just got a couple more. Uh, ALGM Allegro. This is a semiconductor fabulous stock. It had a nice run and then now is pulled back. And it had, you know, in 2022 when the rest of the market was pulling back. Yeah, it went from 38 to 19. So it got cut in half. I had a nice run earlier this year and now it's pulled back. So just going through its uh, due diligence. Uh, Bentley Systems. This is a semiconductor design, software design. And once again, they, you know, they come to market, they rip like everything else, and they fell out of bed like everything else. Went through its institutional due diligence phase. But, um, you know, if you look at the monthly here, it's up, uh, you know, nearly 9% this month. It could be coming out of it. I'm trying to be positive here. <laughs> if we have a new uptrend, you know, led by AI and a lot of these software and semiconductor stocks should perform well. And the last one is uh, an insurance stock. This is an this is a uh, spinoff, so I'm not as thrilled about it. I think it's an AIG spinoff, and this would be considered a rocket ship because it's up pretty much every month and has gone from the IPO of January of 23 earlier this year. You know, it's seventeen dollars, and now it's at thirty. So it's nearly been a two bagger this year for an insurance stock. Um, yeah, just one to watch. I mean, it's definitely got the sales profile you know and starting to get some earnings so um anyway i just thought i would uh share that with you i, I didn't uh include airbnb and some of the other ones that um you know people people like fresh uh fresh works this is one that is one to watch as well going through its institutional uh due diligence phase i said i wasn't going to show these but uh i like uh retail academy sports they have a lot of room for growth they need to improve these numbers down here. Uh, they're in the red, but uh, not bad. Not bad profile here for Academy. On the monthly, you can see it was just a rocket ship when it came out. Pulled back with the market, but held up pretty well. Um, Dutch Bros. I know a lot of people like Dutch Bros. I'm going through my retail now. Uh, this one, yeah, it started off well and it's just sold off. This is looking like a Shake Shack and Lending Club. Like it started off hot and now it's just, down in the dumps, but it might just be going through its due, uh, due diligence phase. And um, they have, they've been growing as well. Um, one more retailer, which I know a lot of people like. And the shoe business is really tough. You know, it's got a big market cap, almost 9 billion, but it's got the sales growth. Um, so that's what you look for, you know, sharp, uh, you know, incline, increase in sales that'll lead to earnings down the road. So um, ON, uh, one thing about this one is management owns 25% of it. So they can dump that on the market at any time. But anyway, uh, there's a lot of them I didn't get to. Um, I just thought I would share that. Those could be your home run stocks for the next few years as they have their hyper growth uh, period. Anyway, thank you for watching. And at MC Stock Charts, we never give up.